And just like that, Script to Sequence takes care of hours of monotonous work in just seconds. It lays out the clips on the timeline according to their timestamps and place each voiceover line underneath the matching video. Greetings, welcome to this tutorial for Script to Sequence, a powerful tool for Premiere Pro that can turn over eight hours of manual work into less than 40 minutes. It takes a compilation style video script and transforms it into a ready to edit timeline by automatically downloading all the videos, transcribing the voiceover, placing each clip based on its timestamps and matching the right part of the voiceover underneath. If you create compilation style content or work with a lot of external clips, this tool is built for you. Your video script should be structured like a table with clip names, video links, timestamps, and voiceover commentary. We'll cover that in more detail shortly. If you prefer having something to reference, a Google Docs manual is included. You can read through it anytime or keep it on hand as a quick reminder. Let's start with the installation. First, you'll need to download the AE Scripts Manager app. You'll find the link in the video description. Once it's installed and you're logged in, just search for Script 2 Sequence in your list of products and install it from there. Now, during the recording of this video, the tool isn't live yet, so it's not showing up in my list, but it will be available soon. Once that's done, open the AE Scripts Manager settings by clicking the little gear icon. Make sure Enable Debugging is turned on for all CEP versions. That setting helps Script to Sequence launch smoothly. If Premiere Pro is already open, go ahead and relaunch it. Then head over to the top menu, click on Window, then Extensions, and you'll find Script 2 Sequence right there. All right, now let's talk about getting your script into the tool. Script to Sequence works with video scripts made in Google Sheets or Excel. If your team isn't using that format yet, a template is included in the description below. The first piece of information Script to Sequence needs is the video names. These are usually numbered for convenience, like one, two, three, and so on. Next is the column with video links. This is how Script to Sequence knows where to download the footage. Each downloaded video will be automatically named based on its corresponding video name. Timestamps are another key column. They tell Script to Sequence exactly which part of each video to place on the timeline. It supports multiple timestamp intervals for a single clip separated by commas. If you're using a different format or need support for more options, feel free to reach out. And finally, there's the voiceover commentary. Script to Sequence will transcribe the audio file and match each line from your script to the correct part of the recording, placing it directly underneath the corresponding clip in the timeline. Even if your script is in a different format like Google Docs, converting it into Google Sheets is still way faster than downloading clips and arranging the timeline manually. Once your script is in Google Sheets, you'll need to make it public. Just click the Share button in the top right corner, change the access from Restricted to Anyone with the link, and then copy the link. Now go into Script to Sequence inside Premiere Pro and paste that link into the Google Sheets link field. Then you'll need to tell the tool which row in your sheet contains the column titles, like clip names, timestamps, video links, and voiceover descriptions. Once that's done, set the column letters for each of those fields. When everything's filled in, click Get Data. Now let's move on to downloading the videos. Click the folder icon and pick a download location. Once you choose your folder and click Open, the path will show up inside the tool. You can also toggle the little R icon to make the path relative to your Premiere Pro project. If you want to track any failed downloads, you can check the box to create a .txt file. But even without it, the tool will show you which clips didn't download. There's also an option to import the videos into the project automatically. When you're ready, press Download Videos, and the progress bar will appear at the bottom. If the download seems stuck on a specific video, there's a skip button you can press to move past it, or you can stop the process completely if needed. Once everything finishes, any clips that failed to download will be listed with their names and links, so you can copy them easily. Downloads can fail for different reasons. Sometimes it's due to regional restrictions, a removed video, or protection from the video platform. But in most of our testing, only around 1 to 10% of videos failed to download. You can also download individual videos. Just choose the destination path, paste in the video link, and click download. The video will be downloaded and automatically imported into your project. After the clips are in your Premiere Pro project, you'll need to select the project folder that contains them. 
Then, click the folder icon in Script to Sequence to load the footage. Now bring in your voiceover file. Import it into your project, select it in the panel, and press Get Audio. Once it's loaded, hit Transcribe and wait for the tool to process it. When transcription is complete, press Assemble. And just like that, Script to Sequence takes care of hours of monotonous work in just seconds. It lays out the clips on the timeline according to their timestamps and place each voiceover line underneath the matching video. And if a video has a different aspect ratio, the tool will duplicate it on a lower track and scale it to fill the frame. That gives editors an easy way to add an adjustment layer between them and apply a blur to create a nice soft background. Sometimes voiceover lines might run into each other. If a line includes the start of the next one, toggle Cut End. And if a line includes the end of the previous one, toggle Cut Start. After making those adjustments, just delete the old timeline and hit Assemble again to rebuild it. In rare cases, a voiceover timestamp might be slightly off. That usually comes down to how the voice actor pronounced a line or minor quirks in the transcription. But it doesn't happen often. Let's move on to transitions. This step is optional, but super handy. If your project uses video-based transitions with markers that define the cut point, Script to Sequence can automatically apply them between clips. To do this, first set the track number where your main footage lives. Then set the video and audio tracks where you want the transitions to appear. You can choose a blending mode. For example, Screen works well if your transitions don't have an alpha channel. Next, decide whether you want transitions added to all clips, just the ins and outs, or only the selected ones. You can also choose whether the tool picks transitions randomly from a folder or follows them in order. If you want every single cut to have a transition, even when clips are from the same source, turn on the Each Cut option. There's also a No Audio toggle in case you want to remove the audio from transitions entirely. Once everything's set up, select Transition or Folder with Transitions in Project Panel, click Add Transitions, and you're good to go. And if you ever have questions or run into any issues, you can easily reach out for support. Just click the burger icon in the corner, go to support, then contact support. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. That's everything you need to know about Script to Sequence. Streamline your video production with Script to Sequence, available now at aescripts.com. Take care.